Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the title of this workshop is, but uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you what it's about. Okay, so uh, so the the topic of the workshop uh, is about basically making a physical model of a car engine in fast, you know, like the car, you know, like the car that you drive, right? And uh, and so uh, so you know, we were like, okay, since uh, the workshop is about procedural algorithm, we're going to try to make something a little bit more concrete uh, than what is uh, usually done with musical instruments. So uh, we're going to make a car engine physical model. And so the main goal is to basically teach you Faust through a very practical uh, example. OK? Cool. So to do this workshop, we're going to use Faust. You're going to use Faust. And, uh, and to use Faust, you can use the Faust web ID, and you can find the Faust web ID at the URL that you see over here, and I, I can write it, okay, let's put the microphone here, and I'm just going to tap loud, so that you hear what's going to happen, and, uh, okay, let me zoom in a little bit, okay, that's not too much, great, okay, so once again, the URL uh, is the following one, so if you open your web browser and go to this address, get access to the Faust Web ID. You want to use the Faust Web ID either with Firefox or Google Chrome. You don't necessarily want to use Safari or Edge or whatever. You want to use Firefox or Google Chrome. Okay. Cool. So please, up on the page, you know, you know, so the way the Faust Web Editor works is that you have a zone here where you can write text, uh, and that's going to be your Faust code, and uh, you get a practical representation of whatever you are writing in the code, and then if you press the Run button, uh, the Faust program gets compiled in the web browser, and you can hear the sound that is uh, produced by your Faust program. Okay. So for those of you who've never done uh, physical modeling before, uh, the kind of physical modeling we're going to do here is more like uh, signal modeling than proper physical modeling. So basically what we're going to do is that we're going to make a sound synthesizer that sorts of try to mimic the sound behavior of an object. And the object we're going to work on this time is going to be a car engine. So, if you think about a car engine, what do you have in a car engine? You have cylinders, you have pistons, right? And uh, what actually uh, pushes the pistons in the cylinder? Like, what's actually, what's the thing that actually uh, makes the engine work? Please. Yes? Explosions. What? Exactly. We want explosions. So, uh, so basically, that's the first thing we're going to implement here. And, uh, and so, so by the way, the physical model we're going to implement here is a physical model that was uh, integrated in a lot of video games uh, in the 1990s, actually, for driving cars. And <clears throat> just to say another word about physical modeling for this kind of thing, you know, like in the 90s, uh, memory on computers and also on uh, Video game platforms uh, was very uh, very expensive, but uh, computation was a little bit cheaper. So uh, so there used to be a point in time when uh, it was kind of smarter to use physical modeling than actually sampling to do this kind of stuff, right? And, uh, and the funny story is that now we're kind of coming back to this. You know? So so there is this company called uh, Staccato System uh, that was based in Silicon Valley that developed all sorts of physical models for video games in the 1990s. And, uh, and so the, the physical model that we're going to implement here is a physical model uh, that, is, uh, that, that was actually created by Staccato System. And, uh, and uh, Judy Smith, that I'm sure you've heard of, like he's kind of the uh, godfather of physical modeling, he was the, the CTO of Staccato System. So, uh, so, uh, so basically, this is the car engine from uh, Staccato System in the 90s, just so that you sort of Okay. Great. So, um, in Faust, uh, you can write functions. Okay. 
And, uh, and so, uh, so the, the first thing that I'm going to do here is that I'm going to create a function for sparks. Okay? So basically, those are going to be the explosions. And for now, uh, what this function is going to post is basically just a pulse rate. Okay? You all know what a pulse rate is. Who doesn't know what a pulse rate is? Okay, so a pulse train is just a series of little clicks. You know, like, so if you think about your audio signal as a stream of numbers, a pulse train is just one and then zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so basically it's like a metronome in a way. Okay. So in Faust, there is a function that you can use for that, and, uh, and this uh, this function is the is the pulse train uh, pulse train function, and uh, and so basically uh, you can just call it by writing pulse train. Well, and here you want to use lf, okay? And so for now, I'm just gonna. Uh, Get rid of this. Sorry, because that's kind of the default that you get it uh, off of the uh, house. Okay. And uh, so for right now, I'm going to call sparks here. Okay. And then uh, my pulse train is going to take an argument, and this argument is going to be uh, the uh, frequency of my pulse train. So for example, if you put uh, 1 here, so for 1 hertz, if you run the program, here is what you get. Okay, this is not very convincing. So you know, sometimes the valves web ID get a little bit capricious, so if you want to reload the page and then run the program again, we still get no sound. Oh, I think I know why. Sorry. It's because we want to use M train, not full strain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There we go. So, very basic error. Very basic error. Sorry. like <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is, like, I feel like I'm taking it an exam right now, you know, I feel, so, uh, I'm sitting here at my desk, you know, and there's the father of Faust, like, watching me right in front of, right in front of me, you know, and being like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're, you're wrong. <laughs> okay, so basically what we hear now are basically the sparks in the engine, okay, so here we have 10 sparks per second, okay. Great. So in an engine, uh, what happens is that if you have, say, four cylinders, okay, uh, you're going to have four sparks, uh, one after the other, so like that, 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 and then you're going to have uh, dead time, and then four sparks again. So basically you're going to have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay. So basically, uh, we need to modify uh, this impulse train function here so that uh, every four clicks, we remove the fifth one. Okay, does that make sense? So that we create this sort of desynchronized uh, pulse train. Okay. So there are uh, different ways to do this in Faust. Uh, but the, the, the probably the easiest way in this context is to create a counter, and the counter is basically going to count all the way up to five. So, like every time there is a click, it's going to do like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and when you get to five, you basically turn down the volume, and then you turn it up again. Okay, does so that make sense? So, uh, to do this in Faust, uh, we need to use. And sorry, this is going to be. I'm going to go pretty quick, you know, because like uh, we don't have a lot of time, you know, and, uh, and this is just to sort of give you an overview of how that kind of things work. So, uh, so I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions after this workshop, you know, like the point is that you have some code and you can play with it uh, afterwards. Okay. So in Faust, uh, basically, uh, to create a counter, you want to write something like uh, plus 
and then uh, tilde, and then uh, underscore, okay? And so, uh, so I'm going to be very slow because this is not my computer, and this is an Azerity French keyboard, and I'm really not used to it, so, so I'm very slow at writing on this kind of keyboard. And, uh, so for those of you who don't know the tilde character on the keyboard, you can get it by pressing option, or option, and then N, okay? That's a Mac keyboard, okay? Cool. So basically, this is a counter. Okay, so uh, so if I send uh, the signal uh, of my impulse strain in the counter, we can actually see the implementation of the counter somewhere here at the end of the algorithm. And uh, can I zoom in on it? No, we can't. Uh, so basically, this is the counter. You, know, you have an add, and then you have feedback. And basically, every time you're going to send one in it, you're going to count uh, uh, from uh, zero uh, and then one by one up to the infinity. Okay. So the thing is, uh, we actually want this counter to be resetted uh, every time we reach five. Okay. And uh, and so to do this, uh, we're going to use a modulo operation. Okay. And so the modulo operation is basically going to reset the counter whenever it reaches five. Okay. So to do this, uh, I'm going to put uh, modulo here, okay, and I'm going to put parentheses to sort of clarify uh, the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to put a modulo, and I'm going to put a five here. Okay, and so, so uh, can I zoom in on this? I can't really zoom in on this. Okay, well, at least I could probably just get rid of the impulse rate right now, so that you see what's happening. Okay, so this is the counter. Okay. And so the counter is just going counting one by one, okay, because it's a feedback. And whenever it reaches five, you know, it resets it to zero because of the modulo operation. Okay. If you don't know what a modulo operation is, uh, then you can probably just Google it. <laughs> okay. So now basically we count uh, one by one up to five every time there is an impulse. So then, uh, what we want to do is we want to add a comparison here, okay? And uh, the comparison is basically going to take the result of this whole operation, so the counter operation, and it's going to say that this is going to be true only when the counter is smaller than four, okay? So what we do is that we count basically. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? And whenever this is smaller than 4, this is true, and if it's greater than 4, or equal to 4, then this is false, okay? So <clears throat> then uh, in Faust, you have an, a signal operator, which is the, the split operator, and the split operator will basically allow you to take a signal and then split it into multiple signals. Okay. And so here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to split uh, this impulse train signal into two signals. One uh, that is going to go to my counter, okay? and then another one, uh, and I'm going to put more parentheses here, and another one that I'm going to multiply to the result of the counter. Okay, so now this is more legible. So we have the impulse train, and then we do this operation here. Okay, and what this operation is doing is that once again, every time uh, we reach the fifth impulse, we kill it because we multiply the result of this condition here by the signal of the impulse train. Okay, so if I run the program, okay. So that's the basis, okay? So now, you know, it, it's like the piezo thing you had in your kitchen to turn off the gas stove, basically. You know, like, tick, 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 you know, and you get, bring the spark, you know, and that's actually the sound of the spark. Right. Cool. So, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, Instead of, for, instead of giving a frequency here, uh, what I want to give to my impulse train is going to be an um, RPM parameter, which is going to be a rotation per minute, okay? because that's what your engine actually does, right? 
So, uh, so I need to uh, take an RPM and then format it into a frequency which is going to go to my uh, impulse ring. So, how am I going to do? Uh, how am I going to do this? So, uh, uh, the there is no very uh, like scientific way of doing it, but uh, you just have to trust me here, and that's what comes from the staccato model that I was telling you uh, that I was telling you about. And, uh, and so the staccato model, what they do is that they take the RPM and they multiply it by 0 0.05. And then that gives you the frequency. Why? I'm not sure. They probably sound a bit like this. Okay. I don't think there is a, a very like uh, scientific uh, reasoning behind, uh, behind this whole thing. Okay. So in Faust, if you use with, you can create variables which are going to be local variables to uh, functions. Okay. So basically, everything that I'm going to put between these two curling brackets here uh, is only going to be visible within the scope of my uh, Sparks uh, function that I just created uh, here. Okay. And so my Sparks uh, function is uh, going to take uh, well, it's going to take an RPM as a parameter. Okay. And uh, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a frequency parameter, and the frequency parameter is going to be RPM multiplied by 0 0.05. Okay, so that's what I, that's what I told you. Cool. Uh, great, and then all I have to do is to replace 10 here by freak. Okay, so that's it. So in Faust, you can create user interface elements, right? And uh, user interface elements in Faust uh, can be like sliders, buttons, uh, knobs, or whatever you want. Okay. So here I'm going to create a slider uh, to control the RPM of my engine. Okay. So uh, so uh, so I'm going to create a slider. I'm going to call it R for now. And uh, I'll say that this is a slider. And this slider, uh, the name of the slider in the interface is going to be RPM. Okay, so so this is the name of the slider as it's going to show up in the interface when uh, the interface is created. Uh, and then we can put like real values for it. You know, like, so let's say for example, 500 uh, as the default, uh, then 500 as the minimum, and then uh, 9,000 as the maximum. And then 0 0.01, sorry, 0 0.01 as the step. Okay. So once again, when you create a slider in Faust, you need to give it a name. That's the name of the slider in the interface. This is the default value of the slider. This is the minimum value of the slider. This is the maximum value of 9,000 uh, rotation rooms per minute. So basically, this is going to be a race car, right? Because uh, your uh, Renault Clio cannot go uh, that that far, I guess, or, well, you can try, but it's probably not very good for it. Well, it's probably going to stop at, I don't know, like, like six, seven thousand, at least on my car, that's how it is. And then, uh, and then this is the step for, uh, the, for the, the slider, okay? Great. So, uh, then I'm going to uh, feed that uh, to Sparks as the parameter here, okay? And then if I run the program, here's what I get. So. Now it does sound like, you know, a scooter. So now you, you can kind of tell where this is going, right? Like, I mean, uh, this is very, very simple. It doesn't really sound like a car engine yet, right? But there is something of an engine already. Like. <laughs> well, you know, there is one thing that is very important about physical modeling, uh, uh, whether it's for musical instruments or for a car engine, uh, and it's control, right? So here, uh, if you control the RPM in a way that's going to make it sound like a car engine, then it sounds like a car engine. You know, like right now, you don't know that it's a car engine. Then if you do this, you don't know that it's a car engine, right? But then whenever you start doing this, like the, when you shift gears, 
then immediately it sounds more like a car engine, you know? And it's the same if you create a saxophone physical model, you know, like uh, you, you get like uh, pressure, uh, you know, uh, opening of the mouthpiece and all these things, you know, and if you don't give it the right parameters, it's not gonna sound like a saxophone, you know? Like, but whenever you start doing what I'm doing here in the videos, when you know it does start sounding like uh, an actual car, uh, car engine. So what are we missing now to actually make this sound more like a car? You know, like uh, how do we uh, how do we improve this? Well, there are many many things that we can do, but currently uh, the main thing that it's uh, missing, like the two main things that we're missing here, are basically compression. Okay, because we want our engine to sort of you know like roar, you know, like more than it's roaring right now, and uh, and we're also missing resonances. Okay, because. You know, your engine uh, is in a, it's basically in a box, right? And, uh, and the engine itself is resonating when the car is riding, and so there are resonance frequencies that your engine has. And so you need to sort of highlight these frequencies uh, if you want the, the engine to actually sound like, uh, like a car engine, okay? So what I'm gonna do uh, now is that I'm gonna create, uh, I'm gonna create a resonance function, okay? Now, though this function here is basically going to implement the resonance, well, you know, I can, in fact, I can probably just call it uh, resonances, because I think it makes more sense. And basically what this function is going to do is that it's going to implement the resonances of the car engine and of the, the box in which the car engine is going to be placed, okay? So, uh, in the staccato model that I was telling you about, uh, there are three resonances that are implemented. In fact, in practice, there are probably many more, okay? But there are like three main resonances, and uh, they are all implemented with resonant filters, okay? So, uh, one of these filters is a resonant low-pass filter, another one, is, and the two other filters are resonant down-pass filters, okay? So in Faust, uh, you can uh, call these filters directly from uh, stdfaust.lib, uh, STD okay? And, uh, and so uh, the resonant low-pass filter is going to be resin LP, okay? And so, uh, so uh, resin LP is going to take three parameters. The first parameter is going to be the cutoff frequency of the filter. The second parameter is going to be the Q of the filter. And the third parameter is going to be the gain of the filter. Okay, so here, uh, for the resonance frequency, I'm gonna create a parameter because I need to format it, okay? And uh, so I'm gonna say that it's uh, R0, uh, it's the first, uh, it's the first uh, resonance. And uh, then the Q is gonna be, uh, say, three, and then the gain is gonna be uh, one, okay? And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split uh, the output of this filter, okay? And, uh, and then I'm going to send it to two other resonances, which are going to be uh, in parallel and added together. And uh, so I'm going to create two resonant bandpass filters, and one uh, is going to have a resonance that I'm going to call R1, another one uh, with, well, with a, a specific Q, which I'm going to adjust in function of the in function of the RPM, actually. And, uh, and then uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, for now, I'm going to give it a gain of uh, 1. And then we'll probably improve that uh, later. Okay. And then uh, in parallel of this filter, I'm going to put another filter, and I'm going to add the result of these two filters together. And, uh, and so this one is also going to be a resonant downpass filter. Okay. And uh, this one is going to have uh, another resonance okay, that I need to compute, another Q that I need to compute, and uh, another gain that I need to compute uh, that I need to compute as well. Okay. Cool. So for right now, I'm going to get to the second column. Uh, right now, it's not complaining because I'm not following the function. But okay. So here, I'm going to put another width. Okay. And that other width is going to have a bunch of uh, local variables to uh, to this uh, to this function, and so uh, so one is going to be r zero, okay. So r zero uh, for now, I'm just going to give.
give it like uh, a static value, but then we're going to, to improve that uh, later. And so I'm going to say that this is 50. Okay. And uh, uh, R1 is going to be uh, 195. Those are hertz, right? So those are like the resonance frequencies of the, the, the different filters that I'm implementing. Uh, and then I'm going to put a second column. And then R2 uh, is going to be uh, 300. And 95. I didn't choose these values. Like these values are the values from the staccato model that I was telling you about. So by the way, you're probably wondering like uh, where this, like why we're doing this model like this here in the lines. So um, we had a project a couple of years ago uh, at Stanford where they needed a car engine physical model for a driving simulator. And, uh, and uh, on a normal computer, they had this physical model implemented in this uh, software environment, which was called a Synth Builder. Everyone forgot about Synth Builder. It was basically way before Max and uh, but it was a graphical patching environment where you could create uh, things just like in, in Max and SP, basically. You know? and, uh, and so, uh, so I was lucky enough to get access to the model in SynthBender, you know, and, uh, and uh, this is a Faust port to the SynthBender uh, model that we're, doing, uh, that we're doing here. Okay, cool. Great. Um, so, uh, here uh, for the resonances, I'm also going to have to use uh, the RPM. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to create an RPM parameter. Okay. And that RPM uh, parameter is uh, then uh, going to be used to create a ratio <laughs> RPM parameter. And basically, what this is, you know, it's just that we're turning the RPM into a ratio. So we're doing RPM divided by 9,000. Okay. And so this is because the maximum RPM of our engine is 9,000. So we're turning the RPM into a number between 0 and 1. Sorry, this is going a bit too quick. You know, like the, the, the whole idea you know, is that you, you sort of see how like the fast program potentially works. You know, and that uh, in the end you have something that actually makes sound and that you can uh, and that you can uh, play with. Okay, cool. So here I'm going to create uh, a pre uh, Q parameter, and that pre Q uh, parameter or that pre Q. Uh, uh, variable is basically going to be based on ratio RPM, and uh, and then uh, here I'm going to be doing some magic math that is also coming from the staccato model where I multiply this by 35 and then I add 35 and then uh, and then uh, I basically just uh, uh, well, I'll just look it like this. Okay, cool. So that's the pre-Q. Uh, that's the pre-Q parameter. And uh, then um, I'm basically uh, taking a Q. I, I see that time is running. Uh, I was like, what, what's the? Should, should we stop at three and then uh, like? Uh, no, I, I think we have yeah, fifteen minutes late. So or twenty minutes late. So yeah, like we half an hour. So we have a half an hour or two, actually. Okay, great. Okay. So uh, here I'm going to format the value for Q1 and for Q2. Uh, okay. So uh, so Q1 uh, is basically going to be based on uh, pre uh, Q. Okay. And uh, and then uh, right now I'm just going to leave things like this because I think it's going to be more convenient and. Uh, so I'm going to create Q2 and just say that Q2 is equal to pre uh, Q. Okay. So now I'm going to plug my resonances to uh, the sparks. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to send the sparks to. Well, I'm going to send the sparks to uh, resonances. And then I'm going to give it the RPM, which is going to be R. Okay. 
and then it's complaining because it says that ratio of RPM is not fair. In here. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, so now if we run the model, we don't get any sound anymore. That makes sense. So that's always what happens. So because I had to change computer because uh, sound was not coming out of my uh, computer for some reasons because of uh, HDMI. So I had to sort of back up to Jan's computer. And so, uh, so, so the producing sound looks very low. It's very low, yeah. I think it's because of the it's probably because of the low pass feature, actually. So great. Yeah, I think this is better. Now I see what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, the next thing we need to do, I think to in, like to sort of keep it improving like this resonance uh, system here, you know, like, you know actually get itself uh, out of it. Is that we need to uh, we need to create the brightness uh, part here. Okay, and so in fact, what I'm going to do now to sort of uh, put things a little bit more together, I'm going to create a function uh, that I'm going to call car engine. Okay. And uh, in this function. I'm going to put everything that I had on my process line. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to call car engine and process here instead, because that's going to allow me to sort of better organize, better organize things. Okay. So here, uh, my car engine uh, is going to take uh, as an argument the RPM. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to pass it to uh, the two parameters that I have here. Okay. And then finally, uh, I'll uh, call it here and get it R. Okay. And I need a seven column for things to work. I'm sorry, because this is pretty low resolution, so maybe I can. Uh, yeah. This is something better. Can everyone see on the screen or this is too small? Maybe in the back it's... It's good. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Cool. So, uh, as I said, the next thing that I need to do here is I want to create a, I want to create a brightness part here. You know, uh, and this is going to control the brightness of my, uh, of my engine. And, uh, and so the, 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 brightness, uh, the brightness parameter uh, is going to be taken by my car engine function here. Yes, yeah, so I'm pulling this brightness. Okay. And uh, I'm going to uh, pass uh, this to, uh, the, to my resonances uh, function that I have uh, here. Okay. And uh, so yeah, this brightness. <laughs> cool. So basically, uh, here I put a 50, okay? But, uh, but basically, what I want to do is uh, instead of putting a 50, I actually want to give it the brightness parameter, okay? And then uh, I'm going to multiply brightness by uh, RPM, okay? and, uh, which is my uh, rotations per minute. And that's the first resonance. Okay? And then I'm going to multiply this by uh, 3. And I think now we should probably hear sound again, because that was the main problem we had. And so for resonance, uh, I'm going to put uh, probably some random uh, parameter here, and uh, I'm going to say that, uh, for example, resonance is uh, one or something like this for my car engine. So I'm just going to say one. Okay. Okay. So this is going somewhere. 
we're making progress, right? I mean, uh, this is still not like perfect, but uh, but uh, there is a lot of things that we can uh, that we can improve here to uh, uh, to to make things uh, slightly better. Okay, so. Uh, for uh, now, I'm not going to make any more modifications to resonances. I'll get back to this later, you know, in a, because for now, I just want to assemble all the elements that we need for our uh, car engine model, and then I will improve the way the parameters are controlled so that we get something that actually uh, makes sound and, uh, and works, uh, works uh, slightly better. So what I told you earlier is that for this model to actually uh, uh, work uh, better, uh, we needed resonances. But in addition to resonances, we also need uh, compression. Okay, and so compression is basically here just going to be a hard clipping. Okay, so we're basically going to increase the gain of the engine by a lot, and, uh, and it's basically just a guitar distortion basically, okay. that we're going to put on the car engine so that it roars uh, a bit more than what we have for uh, for now. Okay, cool. So. Um, I'm gonna uh, add this, and uh, and so I'm gonna call this. Uh, I'll call it pressure. Okay. Uh, I'll call it pressure, and uh, and then I'll give it a power parameter that I need to format and basically put here as an argument to my uh, function. Okay, so I'll give it power. Okay. And uh, and then I need to implement my pressure. Uh, function and by the way, if you're completely lost, I'll give you the code of this in the end. You know, like the code that actually works and uh, and where uh, there is no mistake. So, so that's so that will be better. Cool. So basically, my pressure function is gonna uh, take a signal. So in Faust, if you put an underscore, and that's basically an input signal. And then we're going to multiply this by a very large, uh, a very large uh, number. Okay. And this very large number is going to be basically a number between 0 and 100, for example. Okay, so we're going to significantly increase the gain of the signal of the, uh, of the engine. Okay. So, uh, for instance here, uh, I'm going to use this uh, very uh, convenient function that is used usually in guitar uh, distortions. So, uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to say that uh, power uh, for uh, the pressure of the engine here is going to be 10 power of uh, 2 multiplied by uh, the power parameter, which is going to be a number between 0 and 1. Okay. Cool. So then uh, I'm going to declare my power parameter here. Okay. Cool. So you see here the block diagram of everything that we're doing, right? Like the sparks going to the resonances and then uh, going to the pressure, uh, the pressure thing that is sort of going to increase the gain of the, the signal uh, that we are producing here. Okay. Very cool. So uh, then after this, what do I, uh, what do I do? So basically, I'm going to do some hard clipping. So basically, I'm going to make sure that the signal doesn't go above one, right? Uh, and doesn't go below minus one. So what I'll do is that I'm going to say min of uh, one, and then I'm going to send that into a max of minus one. Okay. Um, cool. So then I need to give a power uh, parameter, uh, well, a value to my power parameter for it to actually uh, for it to actually work, and uh, and so uh, so for now I'm not going to put something too high so that I don't break uh, your ears too much, okay? And I'm going to say that the power parameter is, for example, going to be zero point. Five, okay, and then if I run this again, there we go. So, woo, dead. <laughs> well, no, this still gets it. So there is obviously some issues with my resonances here, right? Like it was, uh, there is something wrong about this, you know, like you put a. So this sounds more like a, uh, I don't know, like a lone bar or something like this at this point. But 
We're going somewhere. Well, like, uh, at least now this sounds a little bit more like a uh, 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 park. You know? I think right now if we actually remove the resonances, you know, it, it might actually sound better. Uh, you know, but if you just run this, well, not really. I guess the resonances are important. So, so far now we do need to uh, we do need to delete them. No, I don't want to export this. Okay. Cool. So. Wow. <laughs> do, do, do you have any questions so far? I know this is a bit messy, you know, and uh, and, uh, and once again, you know, the the point is for you to sort of get an idea, you know. Of, how things sort of uh, work here, but uh, do you have any questions for them? Anyway, 
right, so what is better in this model than in what we already uh, sort of wrote, you know? And, uh, and I think this, uh, like to finish this workshop, this might be kind of a better uh, way to, to do things, you know, just to sort of show you the code, you know, and uh, describe a bit more what's, uh, what's, uh, what's happening here, okay? So, uh, basically, uh, we have a car engine function here, okay? And this car engine function, you know, like basically puts together the different elements of the car engine physical model that I just told you about. So basically the sparks that we uh, implemented earlier, the resonances, the turbulences that we haven't done yet because, you know, the car engine is not super stable, right? Like, uh, you know, it's more like... Well, depends on how well your uh, carburetor is calibrated, I guess, but, uh, but like uh, basically it's not super stable, right? And then uh, you have uh, pressure, you know, like for uh, the for uh, for compression. So so for the sparks, we already did everything. There is nothing to change compared to what we did before. You know, like, so if you look at the implementation of the sparks function, it's basically just the impulse strain with uh, the condition that we implemented that basically creates the uh, broken impulse strain where you only have like four sparks and then you skip one, four, and then you skip one, okay? Uh, and then uh, the tricky thing that I was trying to do just like this, you know, but uh, that is a little bit hard to explain because there are a lot of empirical things happening here are the resonances, okay? So for the resonances, what do we do? Uh, we have our three filters, right? So if you click on this, you know, like basically what you have is that you have your resonant low pass filter going in two resonant band pass filters, which are then added together, okay? And then in the stack atom model, what they did is that they basically, for the first resonance, so the resonance of the low pass filter, uh, they just took the ratio RPM that we created, you know, so the number between zero and one, which corresponds to the RPM, multiplied it by brightness, and then multiplied it by three, and then uh, whenever uh, this number is greater than brightness, we only output brightness, okay? Then a static frequency for uh, the, the, so basically, you know, if you think about this, like what's happening here is that this resonance here, the low pass filter, is the resonance of the engine itself. That increases with the speed of rotation of the engine, okay? And basically, these two resonances are static resonances, so they are the resonances of the box in which the engine is actually, uh, is actually placed, okay? Cool. Um, so, once again, you know, like they did all this uh, math here, which is completely empirical. So, the, as Stefania asked, you know, like basically they recorded the sound of an actual engine, saw where the resonance were, and, and, and they just like tracked them, you know, and tried to implement functions that would sort of mimic this uh, behavior, okay? Uh, and then for pressure, uh, we just have hard flipping. And uh, except that here, what we do, like compared to what I was doing before, you know, is that uh, we have a cubic function that basically uh, makes it sound better by uh, smoothing the angles that you have on your hard uh, clipping. And this is a very uh, typical technique that people use when they do uh, distortions for electric guitars uh, on uh, using signal uh, using signal processing. Okay. Okay, and then there are uh, turbulences, and basically uh, what turbulences are, you know, in a, and if you, uh, if you just open this here, you know, is that uh, essentially what we do, you know, is that we take the input signal and we add some low pass filter noise to the signal to sort of create this more unpredictable behavior that you have uh, with, the, uh, with, the, uh, with the engine and to add some noise, like background noise to, uh, to, uh, to the engine, you know, right? So, so basically, this type of physical model, once again, is a, is a signal physical model, right? So it's not really uh, using um, math to model the, the, the object itself, but you're using sound design to sort of mimic the sound that the engine would actually, uh, would actually, uh, would actually have, okay? Cool. So once again, then if you run it, Yeah, I'm sure you have heard it. 
before. Because <laughs> basically every single video game of the 90s, they use it. So, so like if you uh, if you play video games in the 90s that had like uh, a car, and then you know like basically that that was the engine that was uh, that was kind of used. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna put the link here to the the actual fast code that was used for that. Uh, if you want to download it and study it a bit more uh, later. All I want to say, you know, is that once this is implemented uh, in the Faust IDE, you can use the export function of Faust to export it to any other platforms that you want. So you could totally have it on your smartphone, for example, just by going on Android and then choosing Android and then doing uh, compile. Okay. So if you want Don't to do that, yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe not all at once. Okay. <laughs> anyway, do you have any? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? You know, and, uh, I'm sorry if I went a little bit too fast. You know, like that was kind of the point of this uh, whole thing. You know, and, uh, and in fact, I think we're actually done with uh, the time anyway. So. Uh, so, uh, so basically, once again, if you want to get the model, you can get it here, karma.stanford.edu slash tilde armation slash engine.dsv. But do you, have any, uh, do you have any questions? Yes, go on. We are thinking that rotation per minute is probably uh, uh, 60 times the uh, rotation per second. Yeah. So the, the, instead of time, you know, the time you should have divided by 60, which is almost the same. Which is probably almost the same, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you introduce uh, gears, so you change uh, the test, yeah. so the, the sound should not be the same. Uh, how do you do any strategy for that? So that's a very good question. Because uh, basically, uh, if you make a video game that is going to use this model, uh, usually in video games, uh, this is something that is done by the, the the, the player, right? Because uh, uh, so in most car video games, you can actually shift gears, you know. And, uh, and usually people don't do it because it's kind of annoying. Uh, and uh, so you can choose either your car is working with automatic or uh, manual. But, you know, but that's a parameter that is directly controlled by the by the, the player. I mean, if you have this parameter, how, how does that change the sound produced? Well, it doesn't. Once again, you know, it really depends on what the player is doing. You know, like so. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, like if you accelerate, just like on a real car, right? Like you push it, push it, push it. You know, if you shift gear, basically shifting gear is just going to like, like lower it to a certain speed. You know, depending on the gear that you have on the car, right? So, uh, so usually in video games, uh, people assume that they are like semi-automatic cars, right? Like, so they don't really have like, a clutch, you know, uh, you know like a, a stick for shifting uh, for shifting gears. But, uh, but, uh, but basically, they have a button like to shift gear up or down, right? And so basically, you know, like uh, what you would do in that scenario uh, is that you would basically just like, you know, lower the RPM to like a certain level and then just like do it like smoothly, just like it would happen with an, an automatic car, basically, right? You know, an automatic car, like if you accelerate, it's like, you know, like, you know, so you have like this very like smooth uh, transition, you know, and, uh, and you just control, like literally the only parameter you control here is the RPM, basically, and just with the RPM you can uh, do what you're, uh, what you're describing. Yeah, that's yeah. I have actually a short question related to what you are presenting this morning about the physical modeling because here you just use the standard force library and just by the way, yes, uh, the way you control it is usually you don't have the FP but the gas parameter. Yeah, you have a gas parameter. And then you have the motor inertia which you just don't say. But basically the gas parameter is the uh, is the RPM right? And, uh, yeah, that's like an automatic increase depending on yeah. how reactive it is. And uh, like you, I mean, usually like when you have a video game, like you can put like the dashboard of the car and uh, potentially like see the yeah. like the RPM uh, like meter, right? My, my question was more uh, if you have uh, maybe you don't have time for that, but I was curious to to see what. Uh, 
what is inside the physical library that you were talking about this morning, like the final final yeah. Do you have any example, practical example? <laughs> Are, are you going to show some of this, Stefan? Yes, yes. Okay, so well, Stefan yeah, Stephane is going to show some of it. So, uh, so maybe that's the, you know, once again, there are uh, very different kinds of physical models. And uh, so the thing that I was telling you about this morning, Mesh to Faust, uh, is like by doing finite element analysis, you do sort of real physical modeling. Because you, know, you take an object, you know, and you see how the deformation of the objects happen, and then you make like a sound synthesizer based on that. Here, it's not exactly physical modeling. Like here, it's signal modeling. Which means that basically, you implement a sound synthesizer using sound design techniques uh, to mimic the sound of the various parts of a system that generates sound, right? And uh, and so, basically, if you do physical modeling for musical instruments and you want it to work in real time and uh, to sound good, this is basically what you do, basically, right? So uh, so if you uh, if you get like a clarinet physical model, for for example, you're going to use the same kind of techniques. So like you don't really make like a a proper physical model of the clarinet, like you do, like like signal models, you know, you could you could do it like using you know like finding different scheme or like uh, proper physical modeling, but then it's way more complicated, you know. Like, and, uh, and here, this is very light, you know. That's why they were doing this in the nineties, you know, because they could actually run it in, in real time. So, uh, yeah. coming back to the design of the model, I mean, you took it from the company. So how long? How, how, did, how did they find it? How, did they, how can you know that you have to have three pictures and you have to have this second picture? It's so it, there I, I think there are there are two things. There are there are measurements and uh, some guessing. You know? I think that's really how they used to, to do it. Like they're like, okay, uh, here's a car engine. It has four cylinders. They are uh, four spikes, four sparks, you know, and then a uh, dead time, four sparks, dead time, you know, and uh, and then they measured the, they, they made recordings of the sound of actual cars, and then uh, they did uh, an FFD, and uh, they, uh, they looked at the spectrogram, and then they saw that there were like three main resonances, and then they saw that these resonances changed with time. Uh, in function of the RPM of the engine, you know, like following some curve that they implemented in the code of the of the synthesizer. So, uh, so it's once again, you know, like on one hand, uh, people use uh, measurements, you know, uh, that they make on the, the sound of the uh, on the sound of the engine, and then uh, and then they use like. Things from like physical modeling, where uh, they actually create sparks using an impulse rate, you know, and uh, you know, desynchronizing the impulse rate so that some of the clicks in the impulse rate are sort of removed. You know? So, uh, and honestly, when you do like this kind of physical modeling of for musical instruments, that's what you do. You know, like, I mean, you you do sort of a mix of uh, measurements and uh, of the real thing. That you do, you know? And, uh, and like this is very empirical, so because uh, you can be almost sure that if you make a proper physical model of a musical instrument, that it's not going to sound good if you just like try to stick perfectly to what the instrument is. You know? So very often you have to adjust parameters and uh, and then uh, to to make it sound good, you know, and uh, and so I'm sure that's what they did here, you know. So uh, so they started from measurements from physical things, and then eventually they were like, okay, I need to increase the frequency here by a little bit. I need to decrease this parameter by a little bit, and that sounds much better, you know. <laughs> and uh, so this is a bit subjective in a way, but uh, but it, it works. So okay, so thank you very much.